What's up? This is Don Rothschild, and welcome to the fourth GTA 5 Online La Costa Nostra Mafia Roleplay tutorial. Now, the first job in this tutorial is going to be the Mafia is after me. Simple job. Basically, the basic synopsis of this is when you're driving around and a random pedestrian just breaks out running, like just randomly starts running away from you. You has they that they fear you, you shoot at them, and they just randomly start running away from you, right? You have to just follow them slowly, closely, and cleanly in your car for about two in-game hours, you know, here about. Just keep following them, don't lose track of them, you know, if they switch directions, flip a bitch and just keep following them. And, you know, as you're following them, make sure you get on the phone with the Don in the room, or, you know, your highest ranking member at, at, in the room at the time, and let them know, you know, here's this guy after me, think he owes me money, owes something. At those two hours, get out of your car, block them, you know, take out the phone booth, you know, cause, you know, general signature mayhem. You run after them, make sure that they know they're after you, you'll hear it right here. They have to tell me to go away, and you just have to suck fun from the back of the head, and boom. There you go. Pick up the money from them, make sure they're absolutely down and out. You know, one more hit, just be sure. And make sure... Make sure it's all good and done, you douse them in gasoline and take care of the body, but in my case I ran out of gas. This job pays out $100,000 in uh, roleplay money on the website. Now, job two is the family chop shop. It's different than the pain place, pay and spray chop shops has. It's actually a turf chop shop instead of a racket chop shop. I'll explain the difference in a different video here. So, the location of this particular one we are using, for example, is in Las Mesa. And how it works is you got three people. You got it, the leader of it that calls the shots and says yes or no on this vehicle. You got the person that's going to take down the information of the car, like plate, color, etc. And you got a third person that's going to inspect the car and dig out for drugs and stuff that might have been left in it. How it works is you have the person that wants to sell the car has to go on the business chat, say they want to sell this car. We, uh, when they bring the car into the chop shop, we inspect it. You go on the website, you find the car down the list, find its value, and you give that value of the car in perfect condition. That's going to go towards the mafia money on the website. And plus, when you come back, plus, that, that's mafia money on the side. Then, in the in game sense of it, you're going to get the money that's actually worth in game, but minus 30% of it. So, for example, the chop shop will make the money back in game. From the, but you're going to get the money for the website. The person that sells the car gets the money for the website, the chop shop owners get the money in your game. So that's how that's going to be. That's the trade off for it. When you bring the, get the car sold and everything's done, official for it, you bring it in the back of the lot, you open all the doors, you know, you make sure there's no hidden trackers or car bombs for that matter. Make sure it's all clean and legit. After that, it's all said and done. Have one, you have the third man drive with the pan spray sell it out, and also they take the paint spray and inspect to see if there's been any add-on parts to it, get the total value for the vehicle, and everyone gets paid, and move on. Rules for this, no personal vehicles, no trackers, and it has to be a vehicle you can sell to paint spray normally. Now, next job is working for the mob. It's a new job we've uh, been working on for a while, and it's a deathmatch. It's set in deathmatch and not free mode. The last few jobs are free mode jobs, this is a deathmatch job. The idea is there's four teams of four. They're going to be set around all of the Los Santos. The play area for this is going to be all of San Andreas. And once the map comes up, I'll be able to show you in more detail how this is going to work. Each team, when they come in, they're going to spawn out. Spaced out enough, there's no spawn camping. Don't have to worry about that. No spawn killing. Each team has two vehicles, two normal cars, and a Benson truck. The Benson truck is a transport truck. When, uh, the idea for this is you have to, uh, one person drives the Benson truck, one person get in with the Benson truck with his bodyguard, you have to go, working for Mafia, you have to go to each ammunition and pick up the, uh, you have to do your rounds. The object, the winner of this game is not determined by how many kills you got, it's determined by how much ammunition you have on your, uh, your team's ammunition has by the end of the game. The game lasts about 30 minutes, and... So, you have to go to each ammunition like this, and the blips are off, I mean, you can call Lester if you want, but if you really want to know the really, you know, nerve-wracking experience, don't call Lester. You know, however, whatever poison you like. Each ammunition has a specific selection of weapons, like, you know, the farther ammunition is farther out in the boonies, will have better weapons than the one in this town, you know. Now, 
You have to keep that truck on you at all times, because that's where you're going to store your weapons. Okay, so you keep in mind that. So, I mean, the uh, best thing about these game types is you don't know where anybody's at unless you call Lester. If you don't call Lester, you don't know. You're going to come up to the secondary and make sure there's a guy backing out here. You try to shoot them, guess what? His teammate's already on the other side. We're going to shoot you. Okay, now if you get killed, you can either spawn in one two places. You're going to spawn in one of the hospitals in the city, or you're going to spawn out here in the prison. And the advantage of spawning in the prison is you get access to the uh, better ammunition, in my opinion, that has access to the uh, higher end weapons. You know, and even if you get to the prison, you're good because there's two prison buses here. You can hijack and take your whole. If your whole team gets blown up, you can, you know, get out of there. And as you know, it's not death not This is right here, just you know what could happen. I mean, you're not going to leave in prison and get mini gun death. But again, you're not going to win the game. Technically, you're not going to win the game of role play since of it because you don't have the truck. You have to keep the truck on you at all times. You know, have some team member retrieve the truck. But if the truck blows up, the ammo truck blows up, it's gone. You go on that, even though you're going to win the game in terms of kills, you're going to lose the game in the mop and role play sense of things because you just lost your loot. So, yeah. That's how that game works. It's fun, it'll be as long as, as long as you got it, everyone does the rounds, it's a really, you know, heart pounding game. Now, this is one of those, this job right here, sub air drop. It's one of those extravagant jobs, mainly for people that want to do for the really high end product. This is one of those jobs that's out there, but it's doable. Now, you have to get a submarine and a cargo box. And the idea of this is you have to airlift the sub high up at high, high altitude because you, your the location where you have to pick up the merchandise is near the military base and you know, all they need to see, you know, they have a, their boat patrol pick up a submarine. So what's going to happen is the submarine is going to be dropped about a quarter mile off of land, high up in the air, and you're just going to be basically in a dive, free fall dive, for about a couple seconds, you know, taking the sights and whatnot. You're going to crash into the ocean, high velocity, but you know, as GTA logic is, the water's not concrete, you just go, you know, just fine. Once you uh, gain your senses, you have to travel towards the military base, Fort San Cudo, military base, what he's called military base, because that's the common knowledge of it right now. Get to it. And you have to locate this skeleton, which is near the near the uh, beach line area. You have to uh, go to the skull with the submarine and pick up the product that's going to be in the eyes. Again, it's role play, so you know there's going to be product in the eyes. Once you get the product, you have to get transport on ground, and you have to take it back to your uh, back to your home for uh, future sale. What the product is, it depends on the role play. It depends on who owns the turf and who's stashed it there. One of those high, one of those more extravagant jobs. If you're, if you want to try it, but it's a fun job in my opinion. Next job is a really broad one: is trucking. Now, there's a lot I could, a lot about this uh, particular role play thing that's too much to explain in this video. But basically, every single trailer has its purpose, has its place, has its cargo. Every stop, you know. If you have an up and atom truck, you're gonna do rounds to all the up and atoms, and you mark it in the business chat. And each delivery is 10 grand in mafia money. Like I said, I'll put the values for the other jobs in the text in the thing because the previous two jobs we haven't had a set price on, so I'll put it in the text chat once I talk to the commission about it. Now, these uh, trailers, take them anywhere you want. All the warehouses, they have a purpose. You get paid 10 grand for each delivery. Now they could range from taking these trailers like this, those go to uh, certain gangs. Each, each like Ballers, Vagos, Grove Street, they had their own individual trailers for ammo and drugs and whatnot. And there's also the truck, the gas routes where you just take the gasoline, gas station to gas station, the refinery and whatnot. There's a lot, there's a lot of places you can take these uh, trailers to to get your money. All in all, once we have all the trailers pictured and all the places, you know, the whole map figured out, we will be able to put it on a website and you can have a broad sense of what everything's worth. It's still in its infancy, but it's, it's building daily once we find more stuff. Fun job if you're into the trucking, it's a good chill. Regular if you want to chill at the end of the night, it's a good job to do to make money. The last job is the drug dealing. Now this one, in order to do it properly, you have to, in order to get the drugs to sell. 
Now you can get these one or two ways, you can, well, many ways, but the two primary ways, you could steal them from a rival family or off the street, or the other way you do it is you have to go, you have to gain drug turfs. Now you don't have to own the drug turf, but if you own a drug turf, you can have to can dictate from your control what drugs are going to be given to you. To get the drugs, you have to find a group of people, two group of people talking together pull up to them, you know, you have to get a positive response from them in order to get the drugs. So you walk up to them, nonchalant, you know, calm, do business. They give you a positive response, you put your uh, parachute backpack on, that's to tell us you know you're carrying drugs, give them a salute, and you're on your way. Now, once you have the drugs and you want to sell, you know, you have a set price and whatnot, you go into business chat and saying, use code words, like I'm selling cola, call so-and-so for information on it. You just call, you make the deal, you make the information, you set the meeting point. You go out to wherever you want, decide point, you make sure everyone's like, okay, here's how many people I'm bringing, here's what I'm selling, here's the price. No BS. The person that's buying the drugs actually actually rob stores to get the money to give cash. So whatever percentage it's going to be, whatever price you agreed on, that's what you have to give. Once you're given the cash, once the person selling the drugs is given the cash, you take the backpack off, and the person that's buying it puts the back air backpack on, and the drugs thing's complete. They have drugs in their inventory. You have money. It's all good and gone. You salute each other as a sign of respect. Everyone goes on their way, and it's all it's all said and good. Now, these are just a snippet of all the jobs we're doing. We have to make. I have. We have all planned tutorials for. Hundreds, literally, we have hundreds of jobs we have yet to put on paper. Again, if you're interested in joining our uh, roleplay experience here, I'm going to put the link to the website and the five families' social clubs and the commissions the Maganos, Pravacis, Rothschilds, Traficante, <coughs> and Serrano. Those are the five families in the commission right now. Well, this is Don Rothschilds, and thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon.